Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Oliver Slope Blue Line Futures and a mostly lower day in grain and livestock futures. Let's talk about Oliver, the soybean market. First off, funds continue to sell in that market and, you know, what is precipitating all of the selling pressure by the funds? Well, I think a lot of it is just a, a risk off trade and a, a lot of different markets, not just the grain sector, but some of the outside markets are starting to roll over too. I think crude oil is at least flashing warning signs of slower gro- global growth. We know that there's a, a deep premium to Brazilian soybeans as well. Right. And this is kind of that, that time of year where we don't get a whole lot of demand for U.S. beans. So I think all of those things combined into one has uh, triggered some long liquidation from the funds. And you're seeing that selling pressure really pick up steam as it begins to feed on itself. And then you've got, I think, margin departments, uh, risk managers stepping in and maybe some forced liquidation as well. Now, where is support for the soybean market? That's a a really good question. That July contract, $14 is obviously the psychologically significant point, but technically there's really not a whole lot until you get closer to that mid-1380 level, which was the lows from last March. What about November new crop? Where's support there on the charts? November new crop, uh, you know, I, I I think we're overdone on the new crop, especially with so many question marks still looming over the market. We are ahead of planting pace relative to the five-year average. Uh, but I, I think we can claw back some ground here and get back towards that psychologically significant $13 level. And I think if we do start to trend a little bit lower, you know, I think that's where you get the old saying that low, cri- low prices cure low prices, and you can spur demand and see that help the soybean market, and potentially some of the other grain markets as well. Absolutely. And so let's talk about another one of those wheat markets. Uh, funds have been you know, really pushing that market down as well here through some key support areas. And especially in Chicago, it's a surprise with as short as they are. How much farther do you think they're going to push this market down? Well, they, they've pressed it a lot further than I would have expected. Just uh, a little over a week ago, we were talking about the market potentially breaking out above the top end of the range near 715. And you know, just seven or eight days later, here we are 60, 70 cents off those highs and we're making new lows for the move, trading at levels we haven't seen thinks it's the summer of 2021. And as you've mentioned, the funds are just relentless in their selling pressure. They're short of, as of last Friday's equipment and traders report about 102,000 contracts, which is their largest net short position in over five years you, to, to figure out where, where they were most short. Go back a little bit further, 2017, they were short about 158,000 contracts. So uh, I think they're overextended the short side, but we have seen them build a bigger short position in the past, I, I just think that there's too many fundamental catalysts right now where they want to get too aggressive. All this it takes is you know, one uh, one disruption in the Black Sea and it's a rush to the exits and you see a short covering rally take this market back above seven dollars. Plus, the HRW crop is in such poor condition and that was borne out in the crop ratings on Monday. But yet we do have some rain coming in. So is the market latching on to that that forecast? Is that what's happening? I think that's a large part of it. We know that Kansas has been uh, very bone dry for a long time. I'm surprised it hasn't offered more support to the market personally. Uh, And and I I think the rain events are just kind of making the funds really comfortable at home with their short position. But like I said, all it takes is one event. And maybe that's just a, a technical bottom where you start to see some short covering as well. Eventually, I think this market will work higher, but uh, it's, it's definitely a process and uh, certainly not a point. Yeah, and spring wheat planting is also behind, and certainly these prices don't give you a lot of incentive to get those planters in the fields, even when the snow goes away. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. And I've seen uh, some videos and images here just within the last 24 hours of some snow still falling in areas. So right. things are certainly delayed, and I'm, I'm you know, a little bit uh, shocked that we haven't seen that offer more support to the wheat market and some of these other grain markets. But I think it just, just kind of circles back to what we had talked about from the beginning of our conversation. A lot of that is a risk off trade. And I think a lot of that might be revolving around potential slower economic growth. When you look yeah. at markets like crude oil uh, that, that are filling that gap after the Saudi Arabia cut about a month or so ago, I, I think those are serious concerns that are weighing heavy on these markets. Absolutely. So the fact that everything you just said is bearish, corn actually came off of its lows and ended almost steady on the day. Um, We did hold support we needed to, but how long do you think we're going to be able to hold those areas? 
Well, yeah, corn. I'm uh, I'm probably the most optimistic on that July contract held 601, 595 to 601. That was the low end of the range from uh, last March. Then going back a little bit further, July 26th, there was a gap that still has not been filled. Again, that's 595 to 601. We tested and held that, and I think that'll offer pretty darn good support, or at least from a risk reward perspective, right? From a trader's perspective, you know where you're wrong. If breaking close below 595 and then you're neutralizing that bullish bear or be, bullish bias that you have at these levels now does that mean that the bottom is in for good i don't think so necessarily i still think okay. that if you get a relief rally i think producers are going to want to take advantage of that not just on old crop but also new crop uh, corn well and when you look at july corn um you know what you were talking about with the brazil the lower prices on soybeans hurting the market it hasn't helped the lower corn prices um in brazil on the july corn either has it no and the other thing weighing heavy on corn earlier in the week was that cancellation that we saw from china right. and we were kind of thinking that we might see buying at these levels because when we got that long string of flash sales from china and unknown destinations we we're at these same price levels and so we were expecting to maybe see some demand come into the market instead we got cancellations and that uh, you know definitely spurred some long liquidation but again i think we can make some sort of recovery rally from these levels maybe it's 15 to 20 cents at that point again i think producers are going to want to take advantage of those relief rallies and at least get something hedged you can still remain yeah. bullish and put a floor in the market yeah we're going to be dealing with that big brazil crop for a while yet okay what about the cattle market we've been in consolidation mode there but what do you think um is the market anticipating lower cash as well this week or not yeah, we're hearing some 172 bids in Kansas this morning, and uh, but the market's been resilient. You know, looking at last Friday's cattle on feed report, I think that number was unanimously bearish, but the market had been able to hold in pretty well. And I think we're at that point in time where you're just going to start to see this market consolidate. I wouldn't be surprised to see June futures just trade in a choppy range, call it 162 to 166, until we get a uh, new direction in that cash market. Personally, uh, my bias is that we start to see cash soften up. So that risk, I think, is to the downside. And with prices where they're at, as with uh, you know, we talked about in the grain segment, I think it's an opportunity for people to look at protecting price at these levels. Yeah, and futures are at a discount and the funds are long, like 104,000. So they're going to yeah. defend that long at some point, I would think, wouldn't they? Well, that's what you would think. And again, yeah. 162, 166. But if you get a technical breakdown, you start to see risk managers tighten up positions and that could lead to some long liquidation. Sure. Now, I don't think the market's going to roll out of bed and we're going to crater, you know, 10 or 15 bucks. But I think a five dollar pullback isn't out of the question. And hogs can't seem to put three days of higher prices together. Did we hit resistance again in the June or is it the fact we just can't get that cash to bottom? I think it's just hogs being hogs. And we talked about this the other day where you, you feel pretty good going into the weekend. We got a rally on Friday. We got a rally yesterday, but you just aren't able to get really a whole lot of follow through. And I think a lot of that is revolving around the cash market, which we haven't been able to establish a floor in yet. And that makes me a little bit uh, worried about the June contract here in the very near term. I'm optimistic looking a little bit further down the pipeline, looking out to the the uh, December futures in the mid 70s. I think that's where the value is. There's also a bullish seasonal that started at the end of March and goes through the middle of June uh, that uh, has trended higher for 12 out of the last uh, 15 years for that December lean hog contract. So that's where our optimism is. If the cash market starts to form a bottom and firm up a little bit, you know, potentially June has some room to work higher. All right, let's hope. Thanks so much for joining us, Oliver Slope Blue Line Futures. That is Markets Now.